to a single house fire, 10 pump trucks. They put five on this street and they put five on Blue Hills. Why? Because they knew the risk that they faced when they saw this fire. Now, they had the water on the fire within 12 minutes. But I will tell you, on my balcony, before the fire department came, I was convinced my house was going to burn down. The ashes were coming on me. There's an open field right there that hasn't been touched in a hundred years. And so when I saw the size of the fire, and I knew my backyard had not been weed whacked, there was a direct path of fuel all the way up. I also knew if my house went, every other house in the community would do. Because there's nothing to stop it between here and now. What's really interesting in the fire <clears throat> is with your hydrant down the street, the single one you have, your capacity is 1,000 gallons per minute. Each pump truck takes 1,500. So you had only one truck that was getting water. And it had one major spray of water, and it was on this tree. And I couldn't figure out why you're letting the house burn and not the, the tree. Right? I came out the next morning. I talked to the fire warden. I said, what? And he goes, you have no idea. If the top of that tree here caught fire, it'll just start to jump on the trees that are that way. He said, then you have a very grave situation. He says, you will not be able to recover from it. That's what changed my life. And when I looked at my kids and I said, get your most precious treasures and put them in the car, I came to but this is what we face, unfortunately. Because that fire there is only protected by your one hydrant that you have right about there, and then three others that were down here close to the Saratoga Country Club. That means that fire would have taken out everything. There's nothing in the way. So what we did six years ago is started on putting a new water system in. Now, frankly, I'd asked you guys if you want to be part of that, and you said no. Unfortunately, today you're going to find that that was something we wish we had done. But we did the water system because we needed to get, guess what, hydrants throughout the entire area. And so now we have 13 hydrants, which are perfect when you have fires inside the community. They work quite well. We knew we needed something along the perimeter, so the first thought was we'd have these uh, reels, fire hoses, 100 feet of hose that you could actually put out and that was for what we'd seen before, a home defense system where you could actually go out and cover your house, your roof, around surrounding areas. In discussion with the fire department, they said, that's not a great idea. Why? We don't want junior firefighters out here trying to put out a fire when you should be evacuating. You should get out of here. We don't want you around trying to put out a fire you're not a professional. And so even though we still are going to do this, and we will have people putting hoses all on their houses throughout the neighborhood, it's not the right answer. It really isn't. So we did another thing. At the same time we put in water, we put in fiber optics communications. So stringing the whole neighborhood with fiber optic ports, and you can see these red lines represent a 48 port link, and they all go out to the end of these streets. Did that on purpose. Reason is, of course, once you have the internet connectivity, you can use that to do advanced technologies. In this case here, IoT sensors, internet of things, sensors, and imaging. You can do all sorts of great fire protection things. You can see fires and figure them out well in advance, and these tools exist all over the place, tons of things. And so that was important for us. It's a fire detection activity that we can do. Early warning, if you will. But the issue is this, it's a new paradigm for fire. In 2017, in California alone, we lost 45 people to fire. That's more people than lost in the Afghan war in the last four years. And in 2018, that number doubled to 97 people. People that were on the borderline like we are, fires at night that they can't see in time. 
and then they have to drive out of a road like that. This is war, folks. This is war. This is not a house fire. This is not what we have next door. This is a new paradigm. And unfortunately, we are woefully unprepared for it. So, the size of fire is enormous. There are people who have talked in the other things that elevation matters. Higher homes are more risk than lower homes. Show me on this map where elevation matters. The only thing that matters to fire is, are you downwind? <laughs> That's it. Everything else is, you're in your path, it's gone. And it's changed the paradigm of what we have to face now. This is extraordinary. And it adds to a second risk. First, there's the home risk, your family, and safety of that. But we're finding now, it's an issue with climate change, fire insurance. That's now become a new crisis for us. A year ago, I went to the mayor of Saratoga, and I said, we have a crisis coming. And he said, no, we don't. And I said, we do come talk to me. So I went in and talked to him three weeks later. When I went in, his insurance had just been canceled. That was in January of last year. At that time, I called all the major insurance carriers and said, would you write a policy for a house like this one right here? And they said, no. Some people said, frankly, no. I have all speak. They haven't written a policy in Santa Clara County for years. No new policies because of the risk this place has. The only one is Lloyd's of London. That's the people who do Michael Jackson, right? So it's happening all over the place. This is a neighbor just on Rolling Hills. September 9th, that's just a few months ago. <clears throat> AAA, classic. I'm sorry, based on new requirements, we are no longer able to continue providing you insurance coverage. It's not a cancellation, it's a non-renewal. Sorry, risk is too high, we're not going to renew your insurance. And why? Well, they came up with three reasons. You're a close proximity, but renewal. The property does not meet one or more. Close proximity to native and or non-native flammable vegetation. That's us. Wind patterns relative to fire fuel. You're downwind. Bad idea. And you have poor road accessibility for firefighters. And she goes, I have to trifecta, all three. Any one could cancel my insurance. All three of them are an impact. We are all three of these. Every home in our area here is impacted by those three. So what's the issue? Well, if you haven't seen this, this is the Santa Clara County Fire Department Fire Risk Hazard Analysis Map. We're right there. And you notice the green area, all the parts you think of downtown San Jose, and this massive red here, and a lot of red and orange over on this side here. Well, what makes this area red? It's pretty, well, this is, by the way, the blow up of our area. We're just over here, but you can see most of our area is nothing but red. And the reason for that is, is that you know, if you look at where our fires are, they're not generally in the downtown area here. They're all, they're all out in the suburbs, right? They're all out in this area off to the side. And why is that? Well, because this is mid-pen. It's an open preserve. There's nothing there but wild land. And it's now extreme risk because it's unmaintained. That's our problem. We live next to mid peninsula open space. And the problem is, if you look at our whole little road set here, is that we're essentially surrounded. And the issue is, when you look at wind, wind comes in two directions generally here. It either mostly comes from this direction straight down at us, or it'll come from the south up. We're really worried about the wind coming from this direction and the issues that that creates. I was talking to a gentleman the other day who says every morning he walks the trails here along Fremont Alder and goes to Hunter Point, one of the spots that's very high up on the hill. And he says every day 
he sees new cigarette butts sitting at that bench. And so if a fire goes here, this is downhill and then steep uphill from here, you basically expose that whole area. What does it look like? Well, I went and took a picture of it. So I walked the seven string spray, I went to here, looked straight up, and that's what you see straight up the hill. Do you not see there's a house there? These are houses up here. This is what you see in front going up that hill. Now, what was interesting is I decided this weekend I'd take a walk along your ridge. The ridge is right up here. Have you walked along that ridge? And what did you see? Glass. I'll tell you what I saw, right? This is their fire break line. This is the trenching that they do with the tractor and the disc. Well, the funny thing is, it stopped right here. Why? Well, you start looking at that, and what you see is the road's been covered with trees that have fallen over. They've been there for years. And you keep looking at it, and you see the whole line is nothing but old dead trees. This is what's right up there on your hillside, right? This, those are the houses that are just the top of the hill over there. This is what they see uphill and downwind. <laughs> this is fuel that is what will cause our community to burn down. So which way does the wind blow us? That's my In this case here, the wind's going to want to come this direction oh, generally. It's, it's generally on the north-northwest. That's usually the right right most west. common wind. The most west. common wind is north-northwest. <laughs> it kind of comes this direction, this way. Comes this way. Comes, it comes this, this way. way. It blows from my back this way. Oh, OK. okay? So your problem is that direction. That's your issue. It's not here. It's this direction. Okay. That's your issue. Maria Lane is there. Maria Lane is. I don't know. Maria Lane right? is way over here. Okay. There, here. This ridge puts here. Okay. Okay. I'll try and show you the picture here. In fact, let me see if I can go back here. Well, I think I may have a better. It's okay. Yeah, but you can see here. This is this is this is their fuel. This is what Fremont Alder says is their fuel break. <laughs> All right. They gave up on that years ago. Yeah. Okay. So this will give you the perspective. Then. So what I just did is here's Maria Lane. So we're right here, right? This is the walk that I just took a picture of. So these areas here are nice. You can see the road here is nicely cleaned. But all this up through here, that is what I just took pictures of, all this area here. So what's the problem? The problem is the wind comes this way. Hunter's Point is right here, right? That is your issue. So how do we protect ourselves against this coming up that way? That's the issue. Fundamental problem that we face. Okay. So, one of the things we wanted to do is fire detection, early awareness. And so there's a company called Alert Wildfire, and they give cameras, and you can actually use these cameras to have views. In this case here, this is the Cupertino Hills one, just recently put in. You can see its picture here and kind of its view. And the idea of this is that you can use this to see fires in advance. Does now, it run when pg and shuts off the power? It uh, does not, right? One of the issues now is power, and it's a great question, right? Um, and I'll come back to some of the concerns we hear. So we've looked around our neighborhood, and there's many areas where we can actually put these cameras and point into the wild spaces. And in fact, we've gotten these first two right here approved. This one will look at Fremont Alder and the Hunter's Point area. This one, frankly, looks right over the Cupertino area to protect against anything coming from that direction, right? This is early detection. That's the idea. But what we really need to do is put up a perimeter, a way to stop the fire coming from this direction hitting our community. And so what this map shows you is three different zones, and these little blue things are what are called water cannons. They're nothing more than high-end sprinklers. The kind of sprinklers you use if you have a giant field and you want to wet the whole thing. They're enormous. And the idea is we'll have pumps that will energize these lines and fire off these sprinklers so we actually have a wall of water. 
Right. Maybe the pumps won't work if PGAD decides to shut off all power. No, not true. All right. We've worked through many of these issues, and I'll get to some of the details. The water cannon itself is this, right? It's nothing more than a sprinkler, sprinkler head, like you would see a rainbird sprinkler in your front yard. It's just a very high-end one, and set uh, particularly for this kind of spray. Importantly, it has both a long-distance spray, you can get it up to 300 feet in one direction, if you wish, but it's not the water that matters. It's the mist that it creates here because that is critical in air humidity and making things moist so that you don't have the opportunity of embers moving into your house. Really important. These are just examples. This, this uh, uh, is used in Canada very heavily. It's a portable unit. They bring it out when they have fire coming. They use it as a firewall, and it's been very effective. A little bit about what it does is you put them in a string and you can see here you have the water barrier which is this part here and then you have this mist barrier which becomes a very important added part. And so what we've done with that water system is we've put, this is our four inch line that we have run. This is a two inch spigot. This would then have one of those water cannons sitting atop of it, 8 feet, 10 feet up in the air, and that's what would spray. If you're not familiar with this pipe, it's HDPE, high density polyethylene. It's as tough as it gets. You don't glue it like PVC, you fuse it. You heat both ends and you stick them together and they actually glue together. This will last 100 years. <laughs> high pressure, high strength. That's what we do using a pump to feed these items. You can see the water goes out 200 feet in a direction. And so if you have a circular direction, you get 400 feet wide of a water wall. And then you get all these choices of angles. You can have them high so it shoots into the air. You can have them low so it shoots out and far. But the idea is you tune this so that every area is properly set with the right angle, level, water, and everything. And then what we do is we have pumps, diesel pumps, that are uh, separate from electrical grid. So in the case of a need of a fire, you turn it on and it runs. The control of this pump would be done by the fire department. They would be in control of turning it on. So if there's, if the power's out and the wipe are, and the fiber's out, do they have to come out and physically turn them on, or how does that work? It's a wireless static controller that they would then be able to turn it off for a moment. Okay, okay so the wireless is completely separate from the cell or the fiber. Okay. We're going to have everything as a self-contained remote startable unit. Right. That's the trick. So we have to do that. How far do they have to be within in order to uh, do this wireless? Uh, how far is the what? Uh, is it wireless? What kind of wireless? Yeah, it's, it's a, there's a, a, a protocol, it's called SCADA, S-C-A-D-A, it's, it's an industrial control protocol, and we just use a simple transmitter, it's really a simple transmitter. Um, so, but can they, can they do it from the fire station? Absolutely. Oh, Absolutely. It's, yeah, it's that's, awesome. what, that's what it's all about. It's really an industrial controls protocol, so you can do it from any place, right? Okay. And, and the idea here, and this is really the important part is, um, when the fire department fights a fire, the most important thing to them is water availability. They don't want anybody taking their water. And so the agreement I have with the fire chief is that they would turn on sprinklers when a fire was coming and let them run as long as they can until the fire got to the place. they turn off the sprinklers attach their hoses to the hydrants, and use the hydrants. So they're in control of fighting the fire and the control of the water usage. Okay. So we're basically breaking the idea into three zones here. Uh, each zone has a pump, and so we built, when we put the water line, we put this four-inch spigot at the top of the hill, we put a pump there, and it energizes that leg. Um, this shows actually an altitude map because important in water flow is 
pressures, pushing uphill, downhill, all the, right? So we had to go and actually do analysis of where the heads are by delta and things. And you can see with rolling hills it's nice because we have a nice flow downhill, very advantageous to water. Uh, this is the uh, arrowhead lane one, if you will, same thing, pump here, comes out here, runs along the ridge line down here, here's the Blue Hills folks, right? Same solution when you look at the elevation, in fact when it comes down towards there, it actually drops again quite a bit. Now, this is the Blue Hills one, or the Maria Lane one. This one is difficult, I'll tell you why. The original plan was, okay, where we went, right, that we would have a pump, right, kind of on the Blue Hill side of the property. And that pump would pump up this line here. This is that big open area of the stands property here. And then it would push water both ways. The problem is when we actually walked it, the delta of height from here to here is about 300 feet there's no pump on the plant that will push 300 feet up when you have sprinklers up there that are sucking your water and your pressure out. <laughs> the pump would have to be the size of the tank. Right? That's a problem. So what we did is we considered an alternative, which is you take this and you put it next to your water tanks that are at the top of this hill and you drive your pump that way. And when you do that, if it's at the top of Maria Lane, the height delta is only 70 feet, not 300. And so, that, so were you originally looking at putting it at the bottom of Blue Hills? Down the bottom of Blue Hills, which is okay. the top of where we, uh, this is the highest point on Blue Hills we could get to. Right. The problem is Blue Hills is down there. No, right, right, right. And really, when you go and we walked up on that hill there, it's it's way because our tanks are almost exactly 200 feet above the base of Maria Lane. Exactly, and so that's why the delta from there up to the top is only 70 feet. Right. You've covered most of the ground, two thirds of the ground, just by pumping your water up the hill. Right, right. That is a huge advantage. There's a huge disadvantage. <laughs> You've got 25,000 gallons up there. We have 25,000 gallons up on our main tank. I know what 25 thousand gallons does and it doesn't do anything <laughs> right it's not enough water to fight anything reasonable that's a little bit of a concern um, so what would be the right solution if you wanted to do this it would be to take a pump and put it here close to your tanks take a second pump and put it down here at the base of Marie Lane where you currently have your pump for the sole purpose of pumping more water up to fill these tanks faster. So we're going to have to get, we'd have to get San Jose water involved as well. We have a one inch connection to San Jose water. The way our system works is we oh, fill, we fill an 800 gallon in ground tank at the bottom down of the there. Hill, down there. And then as that fills yeah. we run the bigger sumps, wow. it pushes yeah. it up to our right. tank. So, so we would, so we would actually right. have to have a whole new, connection to San Jose water um, that you know was a four inch connection or whatever down there. We six, don't we don't have anything six. like that today. Yeah let me uh, let me tell you what you deal with with your water system. Your water system comes from the huge tank over at the Saratoga Country Club. Right. But it's the low tank. And that water line comes down Parker Ranch and it comes up here and it actually ends right at Blue Hills. And you have a, a cut line up here to your hydrant. We wanted to tap into that line here. Guess what? San Jose Water said, there's no pressure. It's a six inch line and you have no, we couldn't even put it in the house here because the pressure was so low. That's why, frankly, what I am hopeful you would have done is allowed us to extend our water system, which comes down the hill, to come down here and up here because then you would have had tons of pressure. But we don't have that. So now we have an issue. How do you get enough water up on this ridge to put a protection wall? So, so how much, so how, what, 